Hello, I'm Alex, and I wanted to give you a video update of how I'm getting on with the Tronxy X5SA 3D printer. Now, I did a video of this when I first got it. I had a lot of difficulty with the printer, mainly with extrusion, but also the mechanicals of the printer, the belts and the pulleys and washers and everything else about it, really, apart from the frame. So I've made a lot of changes and improvements over the last year or two, and I've had a lot of useful work out of this printer. I find it's actually quite a workhorse for printing larger items. You wouldn't print your small detail figures and, and sort of miniature uh, novelties with this. This is much more useful for engineering type of prints. Prints, I call them engineering prints, but prints which are sort of large and straightforward. So let's have a look at how it's working. So the main thing to notice, this print surface, it's a PEI coating on a spring steel sheet. And I recommend any Tronxy X5 owner needs to get this. Uh, just look on AliExpress, common brand is Energetic, and it's a 330mm square. And the benefit of it being magnetic is you can remove it easily and flex it to pop the prints off. And you can do this even without waiting for it to cool down, and then you just put it back on while the bed's still warm, and off you go printing again. It's extremely reliable, very good for use with the bed levelling sensor. And the bed levelling sensor will not work with thick glass print surfaces, um, and so the spring steel solves that problem. The, the level sensor works reliably with it. Now, uh, you've probably seen this big gouge here. This happened about a week ago. It's, it's particularly ugly, and it's when the level sensor came adrift. So it, it, it came loose from the 3D printed part that I've screwed it onto, and the result of that was that the printer um, appeared to be contacting the bed, so I hit stop, but the printer then tried to return to its home position, and in doing so, dragged the hot nozzle through the hot bed. So that's ruined the print surface. Um, well, I hope you'll let me off for that one, because I, I think just about every Tronxy user has ruined their print surface at some point. It's a very common problem with these printers. Um, so, moving on. What else have I done to it? Well... I've fitted insulation under the heat bed, so this is uh, foam with foil, and you find this in a car parts store. It's the sort of insulation you'd fit under the bonnet or the, the hood of a car, and this helps the heat bed to warm up faster. I find it takes no longer than, than 10 minutes now, worst case, and, and it will get up to about 100 degrees if I need it to. Now, the other major improvement, if you have a 12 volt version, so an early Trump CX-5 like this one, you need to upgrade the wiring. The original wiring is not thick enough, it does not allow enough power through, and it will get warm to the touch. So I recommend 14 gauge cabling, which I've run to and from the control board. You can see it down there, you can see how thick it is. So that makes a big improvement to the, the heat bed warm up time, and probably the efficiency of the printer as a whole. I've changed these bearings on here, these are now a metal bearing instead of the original plastic. That's important because Otherwise, your, your bed will wobble up and down. The plastic does flex and, and crack over time. And you'll probably need to do something about the pulleys, especially if you've got an early one. So I have arrived at this solution where I use a high quality 608 bearing and a largish, large pulley. And it's a tooth pulley to allow the belt to run smoothly. And I'm very happy with the solution. The pulleys are now 100% reliable. Now I also redesigned this, this carriage here. I call this the Y carriage or, or the Y gantry and I've put this on Thingiverse. And you can see that I've achieved a parallel belt path. So the, this segment of the belt is parallel to the movement of the gantry. Now don't worry about the outer segment because that just runs to the motor. It doesn't matter if that's not parallel, but it's very important that these paths are parallel and, and these as well. The, these must be parallel to the movement of the X carriage. Otherwise, as you print to the edges of the bed, you'll get some quite major distortion, and if it's bad enough, you'll probably get distortion all over the bed as well. It, it's very important that those paths are, are parallel, so that's the next thing that you have to, to sort out. Now, after that, I went for a direct drive conversion. I used this design from Cosa Maker on Thingiverse. And I've made a few ugly additions of my own because I've screwed the level sensor onto the side and I've screwed on a terminal block to allow me to change the, uh, you know, change the items without, sort of, without having to dewire the, the whole thing. Now I like Cosa Maker's design because it uses the original extruder motor, the original extruder gear, but it feeds directly into a V6 hot end, which is the type of the round heatsink. And the fan is ducted to blow only at that heatsink. 
which is a dramatic improvement over the Tronxy design. The Tronxy design, well, it just had a, 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 a metal shroud like this, which uh, the fan would just blow out this big hole in the bottom and end up cooling the hot end as well. And for some idea on how, how serious that is, I'll, I'll just show you. At the moment, we are printing at, well, we've set it to 220, but we're only at 198. And you might think, oh, you know, that's that awful controller. Well, it's not. What it is, is that I've got the part cooling fan running at full tilt. And this duct, I haven't quite set at the right height. It needs to be a little bit lower. And the result is that at the moment, it's blowing air at the, at the hot end. And it's actually cooling my hot end down. Watch this. If I go into this menu, I can turn off that, that part cooling fan. I can just do this on the fly. Something I've always liked about the Tronxy is the touchscreen interface for this sort of thing. So I've turned off that part cooling fan. You can, uh, you can see it there. It's stopped now. And let's watch the extruder temperature. So already you see it going up. So what this proves is that, well, obviously that part cooling fan is very effective. It's actually too effective. Um, but it also shows the value of perhaps insulating the, the hot end. So the, the heat block should probably have insulation on it. And mine did, but I, how about this for an epic fail? I, I, I printed something in polystyrene and it came adrift from the bed. Most people get spaghetti when their prints come adrift, but look at mine. Mine's a, um, mine's a lovely big, you know, uh, melted sticky mess which um, ripped off the the silicone sock in the process so that's why my heat block doesn't have a silicone sock on it anymore but I hope I've just proved the the benefit of the silicone sock is that it helps to prevent the the airflow from cooling down the, the heat block okay so more about the printing then well one of the benefits of direct drive is a lot less stringing because you need a lot less retraction because there's a much shorter filament path and so I have no stringing between these four separate objects. I can just set it going and come back and I'll actually have four separate prints. Now I'm using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, which is something I recommend for this type of print. It obviously does affect the, the appearance. I mean, a lot of people would consider this pretty grotesque. You know, they'd say, oh, that's a really rough print. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's, yeah, it, I'm a little upset about that. Um, that nastiness that's happened in there but I think that was just a speed and temperature thing. Um, generally speaking I get fairly good layers out of this printer now. Um, certainly much better than it did in the first place you know, in the days of using the, uh, the Bowden extruder and the, uh, the, nasty, um, the nasty rollers and things. Um, speaking of which, I mean the, these are still quite nasty rollers. I, I still don't like them. It's difficult to get them to reliably roll. You know, there's always one that won't roll and if you have eccentric nuts then you can tighten them all at regular intervals. I didn't bother with eccentric nuts, I, I sort of regret that a lot more now. Um, it would have been better to incorporate eccentric nuts into the design and the, the later versions of the printer they do have eccentric nuts. But Cosamaker's design in particular I admire the way the belts are fastened because it's very easy to pop these off and retension the belt. If you do that, remember to do it with the gantry parallel to the frame. So perhaps bring it all the way to the front of the frame and strap it on with some cable ties and then set the belts. Because that way you ensure that it's nice and square. If, if you just put the belts on one at a time, you may end up with a, with a twisted gantry. Just a little tip there about these. Uh, what else? Well, we've got a filament holder, obviously. This is, uh, these were printed on the Tronxy itself. So uh, another nice engineering print there. And the only weakness with this is that with a full roll, sometimes the filament comes off the side of the spool, and you can see where it's uh, it's rubbed on the on this you know on these on these arms a little bit. But it didn't stop it printing. And it just meant that you know I had to come along a couple of hours later and, and sort of disentangle it. But it was still you know still feeding through. And so this is the Tronxy. This is what I've made of it, and I'm pretty happy with it. But uh, it does still have its weaknesses. Every now and then I'll probably have to you know, retighten all these wheels. So my next move is I'm going to purchase the latest version of this, which is the X5SA Pro. And that has metal rails and metal rollers. And that ought to be more durable. 
I shall probably have to go through all the same trouble to fix the extrusion problems because it looks like Chonksy hasn't modified their hot end or their fan shroud at all in all this time. So I may end up with a direct drive conversion. This time around I might do it with the various new solutions that are available now such as the uh, BMG, um, what's it called? It's called a, a, from Triangle or something, it's an aero extruder. Uh, can't remember, but um, pancake step motors, lighter and things like that. So yeah, there's a lot of potential for improvements still. So you can let me know in the comments below. One other thing I would recommend, I mean, I find nothing wrong with the Tronxy interface. I, I like the way this works. I feel it's very convenient being able to adjust settings on the fly, even turn the light on and off. Uh, it has an output on the back of the board for a light. And as you can see, I have uh, fitted a, a light in the, um, in the upper frame there, which is not essential, but it just makes it easier to see what the printer is doing. And I particularly like the way Tronxy has handled the bed levelling and things. The, the, the current versions show you the measurement at each point, which allows you to make small, small manual adjustments um, between doing the auto level. Uh, and I find this can print quite fast. I mean, at the moment, we're, we're seem to be printing quite slowly but if you um, crank the speed up let, let's do it right now so I go here and I just tap my speed and let's increase it 150 um, there we go straight away you hear the um, pitch of the motors change and um, yeah well you know why not I mean I hit, the, this cap I showed you before this was printed at 150 percent so this was you know printed at 100 millimeters per second and that is, you know, that's great. That allows me to churn out a part like this much quicker. Uh, it's about a half hour print for uh, a single one of these caps. So I've used the Tronxy for all sorts of things. Here's another example that's uh, to hand. Uh, these bike holders uh, designed and printed that. I like using Design Spark Mechanical to design it. And oh, I guess I'll show you another thing. The, the dryer has a duct, um, that little grommet there was 3D printed, but so was this outlet here. Uh, another example of something which can be uh, designed and printed in an hour or two. Right, well, thank you for taking 12 minutes of your, uh, 12, 12 minutes of your valuable time to have a look at me and the trunks. Yeah, I should really have tidied up a little bit first, shouldn't I? But it gives you an idea of just how much of a workhorse this printer is for me. And uh, I have had good service out of it. I found that um, it is, you know, it, it is worth it for me, and no real regrets because the, the money I spent, I couldn't have done better with another machine. It's just it did take me a number of months to get to the point where I could actually get useful results out of it. If you want results quicker, you're probably better off with a with a Creality printer or, or something that's a little more, uh, um, you know, widely respected. Um, but anyway, that's it. And I'm always interested to hear from people in the comments below, so feel free to make a comment. Um, sorry for not editing the video in any way. Just raw and uncut. So thanks for joining me. Cheers.